country. The longest time I've ever lived in any country is in England. I will be like, you know what? I actually fancy having fish and chips. Somebody in Zimbabwe might be like, what are you on about? Hi guys, welcome to my channel. And today I'm outside and it's lovely and sunny and for a bit, the rain has stopped. <laughs> This summer has really been a washout and I'm sure if you are in England, you would definitely agree with me. So I decided to, to come out. I decided to go outside and uh, see some roads or streets that I haven't walked on just for me to know them and also to thrash out some thoughts that have been running around in my head so come along with me so you might be wondering what has she been thinking and basically i've been thinking about cultural identity and thinking about navigating navigating identity crisis and I feel like I'm going through an identity crisis and if you were born in one country and you're now resident in another country how are you fitting in in both cultures or the two countries that raised you how are you fitting in both cultures like for me I've lived in England for over half my life the longest place I've lived in any country or sorry the longest time I've ever lived in any country is in England and um, my formative years or foundational years were in Zimbabwe so there is still a lot of a lot about Zimbabwe that is still in me and now there is a lot of English British culture that is in me and um, today I woke up and I was thinking I shall do my first vlog in Shona because Shona is dear to me I love the language I did the language up to sixth form I did poetry I did literature I did grammar up to sixth form so I think my Shona is um fairly decent but um i am no no longer using it as much since i moved to england because of not having people to speak shona with or not having people to converse in shona with on a daily basis and you know how they say if you don't use it you lose it I'm actually starting to fear that I might lose I might lose my Shona because I'm not using it and that's actually getting me into a state of panic and um, that's one reason why I was like you know what I need to go outside and just walk and try and figure a way forward for myself I know that there are a lot of you who watch this channel who are also in the same position as me. You were born in one country and now you live in another. How are you navigating this issue of identity? Please share. Maybe as we talk about this issue, we can find a solution. So this is where I am. I never knew that there was a a farm at the at the top of this road but this is beautiful absolutely beautiful
I'm trying to decide. I'm trying to decide whether to turn left or right. I think I'm gonna go right. I'm gonna go right. So one of the, the dreams I've had for a very long time, being an, an arts person, a creative person, is to actually make cartoons for children that are in Shona. That's my heart's desire. It's, it hasn't left me. And it has been on my heart for a very long time. And, um, and I'm just thinking how... Will I go about that? Um, where do I start from? Are there any cartoons that are doing well right now in Zimbabwe that are all in Shona, like good animation? Because um, I think it's very important for children to learn in their mother tongue, in their mother languages. And if you live in, in another country and... Um, and you got young children are you getting your kids to to watch cartoons in your native tongue in your mother tongue are you doing that for them because i think saving a language is very important um maintaining a language is um is very important and making sure that a language is not lost i'm actually starting to think that if we are not careful as um first generation migrants or second generation migrants our um, languages will be lost what do you think what do you think so um an interesting thing about me is that I'm absolutely fond of Zimbabwe, like um, I miss Mutare. I will put some pictures of Mutare here. miss walking into the town center i miss going to turner memorial library i miss um i miss those trips i made as a child to the library because in the library i was able to get books and imagine a different world imagine a different life for myself i could travel anywhere and i could learn about anything that i fancied and I miss that. I miss Christmas pass. I miss the drives on the Christmas pass. I miss the drives in Vumba and the surrounding areas. I miss seeing Birchnaf Bridge. I miss the pies we used to have at Birchnaf Bridge. There are shops there and we could, we would always stop over and buy pies and, um, yeah, I would always stop over and buy pies. And those days in the 90s, we had a, we had Spalletta pie nut. And I used to love Spalletta pie nut. So I miss, um, I miss eating mauyu. In Kenya, they call them mauyu. And I realized that in Kenya, they dye, they dye the, the baobab fruit red. I'll insert a picture of that. But in Zimbabwe, we don't dye them. We just crack them, crack the fruit, and we just um, suck on the suck on the fruit till we are left with the seed. And I really miss that. I got memories of stopping over at Chakowa and um, 
getting tomatoes, buying tomatoes, and the women selling the tomatoes will be like, Mayowe! Mayowe! Ndichangirayo Mayowe! Those are some of the memories that I have. But in the same vein, I appreciate all the beauty that England has. I love the way that things are organized. I love the well-maintained roads, not having to jump over portals, navigate them. I love the greenery. I love the opportunities that are present. I love England as much as I love Zimbabwe. This is this is now home for me and I love it look at that I love it so I'm actually I am fond of England and of Zimbabwe I'm fond of both countries that I call home I'm fond of England I'm fond of Zimbabwe I was trying to see um, where the lighting would be best. I think um, this way would be good. So these two countries that have molded me, Zimbabwe and England, I love them equally. There is no country that I love less. I love them both because I am who I am today because of Zimbabwe and because of England so yeah that's where I am in terms of cultural identity I am Zimbabwean and I'm British I am Zimbabwean and I'm English. I've got the best of both worlds. Um, the Zimbabwean who lives in England, but once or twice a week, I want to eat my sadza and my meat and my vegetables. I want to eat sadza, muriwo, Nenyama, I want to and if I don't it doesn't sit right with me and people who have been born in England and they're indigenous to England they wouldn't um, understand my my sadza cooking they wouldn't they wouldn't get it but this is who I am as somebody raised in two cultures and then on a Friday like today I will be like, you know what? I actually fancy having fish and chips. And somebody in Zimbabwe might be like, what are you on about? Why do you want to have fish and chips on Friday? But that's just um, part of my heritage. I am who I am today because of these two countries. So yeah, I just thought that I would share what's on my mind and um, hopefully I will do that pure Shona vlog and I will share it here and we'll see how well I do with that one so I'm actually just gonna continue walking enjoy enjoy the surroundings Beautiful day. 
It's a beautiful day. There's a song that goes like that, isn't it? Beautiful, beautiful. I love it. A mini car, totally British. One thing I like about walking is that I get to see different houses, how people maintain their houses, maintain their gardens, and it just inspires me. Thank you for coming out with me today and um, I hope you have learnt about one or two new things and uh, I've triggered some discussion about cultural identity and how to navigate it so yeah enjoy the rest of the vlog and the outdoors it's a beautiful day and if you're not subscribed to this channel kindly do press the subscribe button give it a like and remember to comment. Let's enjoy the rest of this walk. Goodbye.